You have the ability to go in such a space if you're willing to suffer, and I mean suffer, your brain and your body, once connected together, can do anything. And this 30 miles was the life-changing moment. I was out of it. I was in the worst pain in my entire life. I was, to me, on the brink of death. And I was able to chunk this 30 damn miles into small pieces. I was so driven, and I'm not, I'm not gonna say motivated because motivation's crap. Motivation comes and goes. When you're driven, whatever's in front of you will get destroyed. So I sat in this chair and I was so driven to succeed in this race. And, it, and at this time, everybody goes, were you thinking about the guys that died? And I'm not gonna lie to you, I wasn't. This became a personal thing. This became me against this race, me against the kids that called me nigger, me against me. It, it, it just became something that I took so, so violently personal. And I broke this thing down into small pieces. I said, okay, I gotta get nutrition. I gotta be able to stand up before I can get off this curb and get off this chair and be able to go 30 miles. So I went through all these small steps and I, I was able to stand up. And then from standing up, I was literally walking around with my wife at the time and she goes, you're not gonna make the time. She goes, you're running, I mean, you're, you're walking like 30 some minute miles. I got to mile 81. And the second she said that I'm not gonna make the time, I ran the last 19 miles nonstop. And I can show you right now when we get done with this. Matter of fact, I'm gonna show you right now. This was years ago. And I had to put compression tape on my Whoa. ankle. And I had, so this was years ago. I had, literally the size of half dollars. I had to get compression tape and I taped up my ankles and I taped up my feet. And that's how I got through that race. Was it like a hematoma? I mean, what do we, what No, so happening? what happened was I, like my shins hurt so bad from having stretch fractures that the only way I could continue on oh. was I taped it so I wasn't doing the flexure motion that, that mm -hmm. activates your, your shins. So I taped my ankles and my shins up, and I got that from, because in my third hell week, they weren't gonna let me go back to you know, train anymore. Right. So I literally went through all of Bud's, my last SEAL training with stretch fractures and shin splints. And how I did it was I would take my ankles all the way up to my calf every morning. So for the first hour, the pain was excruciating. Mm. But what happened is my feet would go numb. And I Whoa. did that every single day for six months. Whoa! And that's how I got through my third hell week because I was so broken from the first two that the commander said, hey, the CEO said this is your last time we're sending you through. So that's how I got the idea to do that. So with the right, and, and people may listen to this and say, this guy is sadistic, he's crazy. He's, no, if you know how I came up, you realize I was just a scared kid that found drive and passion to be something much better than what he thought he was. And that's why I talk about the warrior mentality. And that's why so many people are lost when I start talking. You have the right. You're lucky that you don't have to think like warriors think. You're very privileged. I chose this world to be a warrior. And I would, and I would choose it again if I came back to this world. But the mentality of a warrior is very different than normal mentality. You must be that person on that door, open, get ready to open it, thinking to yourself, if I die, so be it. The only way you can go in that door is knowing there's a great chance you're gonna die. It's like being a SEAL, you train with live ammo. You jump out of an airplane, every, 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 everything you do, you could die. So to be a warrior, why people don't understand me, I'm glad you don't understand me. Merry Christmas, good on you. Because being a warrior takes a whole different mindset. A whole different mindset to know that there's a great chance I may not be in the military, like I was in for 21 years. I'm lucky. I'm very lucky that I'm alive, able to talk to you, able to still run. But when you sign up on that dial line to be a, like a SEAL, your mentality changes. I may not live. You gotta accept that. And that's the mentality you have. Look at yourself, man. Look at yourself. And it was that day, in a couple of days after that, I just got real with myself. And every day I came home, I called the accountability mirror. What am I gonna do today 
to change what I see in this mirror? What am I gonna do today? And a lot of it was, I stopped sitting with the cool guys. I actually tucked my shirt in and went to school looking like, hey man, this is how I'm gonna look. If you don't like it, so be it. I had to really wear this, this, this layer of skin. I had to develop a really calloused skin on me to, to take whatever you're gonna call me, you're gonna call me. Whatever I'm gonna be, you know, I want a geek, but whoever I am, you're gonna see me. You're gonna see me for who I am because I need to change who I'm not. And that accountability mirror just, just became raw. And I became fat over the years because I fell back in the hole, I called myself fat because I was fat. And people don't want to do that. They want to say, oh, don't call yourself fat. Don't call yourself dumb. If you're not real and raw with who the fuck you are, nothing's going to change. And in this nice new world that we live in, we want to hear, you're just a little big. No, man, you might be fat. And it's okay to hear that from yourself and from everybody else. So that's where it started at. And it's raw. It, it gets ugly sometimes with me in that mirror. But I'm also proud of myself to be able to tell myself that and then fix what's in that mirror. That, that's what hits me. And that's what I really want people to hear is that you can say those things, A, because they're true, and B, because you can fix them. Right. And your whole life has been about addressing those things. Mm -hmm. So walk us through how in the book mm -hmm. do you help people start addressing it? Because that's what I think is so powerful about your book. So the first thing about it is, once you realize it, and you have to realize it, you gotta call yourself out. Addressing it is very small. It's, it, like, it doesn't go from like, one morning, I'm um, this way, next morning I wake up and presto, the, you know, five steps to greatness. No, <laughs> it ain't that, brother. <laughs> you read my book, this is hard work. It's every day, like, like right now. I had to be honest with you, man. I'm even shaking right now being on this show. I'm a big time introvert. How you address it is you face it. You face it every day. You face it every single day of your life where you say, okay, like if you're fat, you need to lose weight. It's patience. It's patience in this fact of accepting who you are right now. I'm fat. I don't like myself. Accepting the fact that if you lose three or four pounds, that's a huge accomplishment. You have to live in your own fucking world. You cannot judge yourself. That's why social media and all these things are horrible. You can't judge yourself off of the so-called competition that we have made up in our mind. The things that, how people look, how people act, how smart someone is. This is a race that you run completely alone. And you're all by yourself. I had tons of sticky notes all over my mirror. It wasn't like, be better than John or be as fast as whoever. Okay, David, yesterday you did this. Today, our next goal for the week is this. So I had a year goal, weekly goals, daily goals, hourly goals, and the big goal was I lied a lot growing up. I wanted to be accepted. One goal was, let's go one day without lying. Let's go one day, and then when I would lie to somebody, I would say, hey man, now go, I had to go back now and apologize and say, hey man, I lied to you. You know how hard it is to go back to somebody and say, I lied to you? Hey man, you know what? Back there, I lied to you, dude. I, I, I was really jacked up. So I figured out these ways of total, total accountability. Like right now, I had to run this morning before I talked to you, because why? That's what I'm about. I'm about mind, mat, body, fitness. A lot of folks talk so much shit about, hey, I'm gonna change your life. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. Are you accountable for what you're doing? Are you accountable? And I mean to the T for what you're saying. I am. And that's where it started. It started with that total, total accountability of let's not lie today. Let's tell people the truth about who you are. And when you can get on and tell someone like I'm doing right now exactly how fucked up you are, that's the goal in life. To put your life on a billboard, on the busiest road, in the busiest highway in the world and say, this is how fucked up I used to be. Take it or leave it.